Tune in to Spirit and Life. Coming up next, our topic will be Greatness Comes Through Humility. Life Christian Television invites you to join us now for Spirit and Life with Pastor Charlie Alvarado. Hello and welcome to Spirit and Life. I'm your host, Charlie Alvarado, and I'm happy to be with you today. Let us say, this is the day the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord is with us. He's in us. He's for us. He loves us, and He's lavishing us with His love even now. The Lord is looking for people that He can work through. He wants to do great things through you and me. All we have to do is present ourselves every day, just like Paul wrote to the Romans. Let us offer our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, for this is our reasonable service. What does that mean? This is how we worship God, by giving ourselves to Him. I'm glad that you're with us today. We're going to talk about how greatness comes through humility. Jesus teaches us in His Word and by His example that the only way we can truly be great in the kingdom of God is to serve one another. And I hope that that, that your heart and mind is open to receive these words that we have to present to you today. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. So today we're going to hear the word of God. Spirit and life will be given to us as we open our hearts and minds. Before we continue, I want to give a big thank you to our church family, One for Life Ministries, for underwriting this program. And I want to invite you to come and join us. Come and be a part of a loving family. If you're looking for a church, if you're looking for a place where you can worship God, a place where you can serve and just be part of a family. Come and and give us a visit. Let us show you what we do every time we come together. We come to serve and not be served just like the Lord Jesus. And we're going to cover that in just a moment. There's love, there's unity, there's joy, there's peace, and and just a very warm family environment. We have ministry for children of all ages, and we have marriage ministry. We offer counseling, and it's free. All you have to do is call and make an appointment. We'll be happy to meet with you. We also have a food pantry for those who are in need. So give us a call and let us be a blessing to you. If you're interested or have any questions, call us at 915-920-8301. And and again, I hope you'll come and see us on Sundays at 10 a.m. God bless you and thank you for watching. Greatness comes through humility is our topic today. And I want to start by reading uh, John chapter 13. We'll read verses 1 through 17. This is where Jesus washes his disciples' feet. So here in in verse 1, it is written, Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his Father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper, and the devil had already prompted Judas, Simon's, uh, son, uh, Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything, and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I'm, what I'm doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested, you'll never, ever wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. Simon Peter exclaimed, then wash my hands and my head as well. Lord, okay, then, then wash my hands and head as well, Lord, not just my feet. So Peter got the message. Jesus said, if you don't let me wash you, you don't belong to me. You can't belong to me unless I wash your feet, unless I serve you. Remember, Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the Son of God. And here he is washing the feet of his disciples. Verse 10, Jesus uh, replied, he said, a person who has bathed all over does not need to wash except for the feet to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you, for Jesus knew who would betray him. 
That is what he meant when he said, not all of you are clean. After washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to watch, wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth. Slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. All this was done by Jesus to give us an example for us to follow. Remember, he's Lord and teacher, yet he humbled himself and washed the feet of his disciples. Again, our message today is greatness comes through humility. We cannot be great in God's kingdom without being humble. James wrote, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Jesus did not show pride, even though he had all the power. He could have turned, or he did turn water into wine. He walked on, on, on water. He cast out devils. He healed every kind of sickness. He even raised the dead. And yet here he is washing the feet of his disciples. And he said, I'm doing this on purpose because I want you to do this for one another. And so if we want to be great in the kingdom of God, then we, we cannot be great without humility, without serving one another. You know, typically when, when one goes to a, a restaurant and they sit down, someone serves them. Well, in the kingdom, you know, and oftentimes, of course, people who are being served in a worldly mindset, well, maybe they think they're greater than the one who's serving but in the kingdom, the one who serves is greater than the one who is being served. And Jesus set that example for you and me. We are not to esteem ourselves higher than anybody else. On the contrary, as God's kids, as God's people, as kingdom people, we must demonstrate humility everywhere we go. Pride comes before destruction, says the word of God. A haughty spirit before the fall. And again, God's going to reject the, pride, the prideful person. We can't think we're better than anybody. On the contrary, we have to see others the way God sees them. With love, with respect, with humility. God wants all people to be saved, but if we go around acting like we're better than anybody, then of course we're going to turn people off. And that's, that's the example that we're setting before others, that, that we think we're better. God doesn't want that from us. Remember, we're only going to be here for a very short time. Man at his best, says James, is a vapor. So our life is short, and we don't have time to waste and it's important that as God's children that we have the correct mindset, and that is one of humility, one of service, one of, one of giving. And, and so our role as, as God's people is to shine light. And light is shining when we're serving one another. And, and I tell you what, love abounds when people serve one another. And Jesus, he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Uh, to me, that's just a liberating thought to know that, that, that I get to serve the people around me. And, and of course, I always come away from it better than, than how I went into it. If I just have the mindset to give, then I'm, I'm releasing the Spirit of God. The Word of God teaches us that he who waters is himself watered. He who refreshes others is himself refreshed. So when we're reaching out and serving others, the goodness of God is pouring out through us. Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Well, if living water is coming out of us through our humility and through our service, then nothing can come out. We've got to make sure, or nothing can come in that isn't of God. So, But we have to make it our our point, our decision every day to, to let the living water 
flow out of us and it flows when we serve one another. Yes, the greatest in the kingdom is the servant of all. We're going to talk about that in just a moment here. So there's one example where Jesus, you know, he humbled himself. He being the teacher, him being the rabbi, set the example for you and me to serve one another. And this is what's expected from you and me from our Heavenly Father every day. We're not here to be served. We're here to serve. Uh, Mark chapter 10, verses 35 through 45 uh, says, Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came over and spoke to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do us a favor. What is your request? He asked. They replied, when you sit on your glorious throne, we want to sit in places of honor next to you, one on your right and the other on your left. But Jesus said to them, you don't know what you're asking. Are you able to drink from the bitter cup of suffering I'm about to drink? Are you able to be baptized with the baptism of suffering I must be baptized with? Oh, yes, they replied, we are able. Then Jesus told them, you will indeed drink from my bitter cup and be baptized with my baptism of suffering but I have no right to say who will sit on my right or on my left. God has prepared those places for the ones he has chosen. When the 10 other disciples heard what James and John had asked, they were indignant. So Jesus called them together and said, you know that the rulers in this world lorded over their people and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must be the slave of everyone else. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Now, only God chooses who's going to sit next to Jesus. But Jesus is making a point here. If you want to be great... If you want to be exalted in the kingdom of heaven, and I hope everybody does, then you cannot be exalted. You cannot be promoted without humility, without serving others. Humility and service is the path to greatness in the kingdom of God. It's not about getting honor. It's about honoring others. And in that process, you are elevated. You are promoted by the way you treat other people. This is a point that Jesus is really trying to drive home to his disciples. Well, the examples that had been set before them by the religious leaders was to get all the attention. And and that's how greatness is seen. Greatness is observed by those who have all the stuff, have all the material things, who are getting all the attention. That's not what makes a person great in the kingdom of God. It's different. It's pretty much the opposite of what we see in this world. We're taught by the Word of God to esteem others higher than ourselves. And we're taught by the Word of God not to think too highly of ourselves as well. And so we must put on the garment of a servant just as Jesus did. He dressed himself as a servant and washed the feet of his disciples. Here he's teaching his disciples and he's teaching us that in order to be great in the kingdom of God, we must serve one another. And I tell you what, when I'll just speak for myself. When I think this way, it helps me love others. It helps me be generous with whatever I have. It, it helps me to, to take the time to, to pray for people and, and, and just listen to what other people have to say. It helps me because I know that whoever, whoever crosses my path, God loves that person and God cherishes that individual and God wants that person to be in his his kingdom. Jesus preached the kingdom. He wanted everybody to know that God loves them. He wanted everybody to know that God wants everyone to be part of his kingdom, which is made up of righteousness, peace, and joy 
in the Holy Spirit. In the kingdom, there's love, there's humility, there's service, there's generosity, there's brightness that comes through an individual because they're letting God live in them and through them. And that's what God wants us to be part of his kingdom and, and, and to, to not be attached to the things of this world and not have a worldly mindset. We have to renew our minds. That's why Paul said, offer your bodies as living sacrifices. Don't be conformed to this world. Don't take on the nature and the characteristics of this world. Don't think like a worldly person. Think like a godly person. And Jesus is the perfect example of a godly person so we can see him who took the time to talk to the multitudes, who took the time to go to people's homes and pray for their sick loved ones, who took the time to sit and eat even with tax collectors. You know, Jesus valued human life. He valued people because he knew God loves every one of them and he wanted to give everybody a chance to be saved. He wanted everybody to have a chance to, to become part of the kingdom of God. Many times people will say, well, we're all God's children, but that's not true. What is true is that we are all God's creation. Only the ones who believe in Jesus can become children of God. And that's why, I mean, people have a choice. People can accept Christ or reject Him. They can accept that He is the Son of God, that He is God's sacrifice for mankind, that the only way to be saved is to believe in Him. And sometimes people might ask, well, what, what do I have to be saved from? Why do I need a Savior? The reason we need a Savior is because God has already condemned the world. And so the world is going down. The world is a sinking ship. It's not going to survive. God will destroy it. And that day is coming. So we want to help people escape the destruction that is to come. So people have to know Jesus because it's the only way to, to be uh, delivered from that destruction and to become a citizen of heaven is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. God set it up this way, but it's only, it's up to us to, to spread the gospel and it's up to us to represent the kingdom of God and we represent the kingdom with humility, with love for our fellow man. Because if people don't believe, then they will perish with the world. The lake of fire was made for the devil and his demons. But those who reject God, those who reject Christ, will end up in that lake of fire as well. Because there's only two choices. Either believe in, in Jesus or reject Jesus Christ and do things your own way. And that's what a lot of people are doing now. Can we make them change? No, but we can inspire change. We can inspire people to change by simply allowing ourselves to change and to show humility, to show love, to, to exude the goodness of God so that others can taste and see that the Lord is good. Our role is to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ, to exalt our Heavenly Father, and we do this by loving one another by serving one another. Jesus said, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life as a ransom for many. Every Sunday in church, we make our declaration of faith. I lead the people. Why, why do we do this? Oh, I believe it's just important for, for God's people to, to know who they are and to say what they believe, to declare it out loud. You know, Jesus said, whoever confesses me before men, him I will confess before my Father, which is in heaven. So when we're talking about Jesus, when we're declaring his name, he's declaring our name before the Father who is in heaven. So when we let Jesus be known here, he is making us known in the kingdom of heaven. So I lead people in a declaration of faith every time we come together. And in that, we always close it by saying, I'm not here to be served, but to serve and to be a blessing to everyone around me. Boy, to me, that just frees everybody. It frees me. It frees us all up to, to know our purpose here is to let light shine through us. And light shines through you and me when we serve one another. 
And here in, in uh, Matthew chapter 23, uh, Jesus is, is criticizing the religious leaders. And in, uh, we'll read verses 1 through 12. He says, Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The teachers of religious law and the Pharisees are the official, official interpreters of the law of Moses. So practice and obey whatever they tell you, but don't follow their example. For they don't practice what they teach. They crush people with unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to ease the burden. Brothers and sisters, in God's house, those who are leading must be prime examples of humility. Those who are leading must be prime examples of service and love. If we're going to step into that position and lead God's people, then we must lead them in the path of righteousness, following the Lord, our Savior, who is our shepherd. We're instructed by the word of God to shepherd the flock of God. So in a church, whoever is overseeing that church is taking care of God's flock, not their own flock. David took care of Jesse's flock and he, he, he defended them and he protected them and he killed lions and bears or a lion and a bear. And then he even killed Goliath who was attacking the children of Israel, who was mocking the children of Israel. And so here, you know, he had the heart of a shepherd, but then he said, the Lord is my shepherd and he shows us what a shepherd does. He makes us lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside still waters. He restores our soul and leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So he understood the role of a shepherd and he understood the role of the Lord. And we who are overseers must follow the example of Christ in taking care of God's people. So here Jesus is saying, listen to what the religious leaders are saying, but don't follow their examples because they're not, they don't, you know, they're practicing uh, or, or what they're preaching, they're not practicing. So for you and me, we must learn from this and let's make sure that whoever is leading us is actually a doer of the word and doesn't only say it. The leaders in God's house must be good examples of humility. Amen and amen. Verse 5 says, everything they do, again, he's talking about the religious leaders, scribes and Pharisees. He says, everything they do is for show. On their arms, they wear extra wide prayer boxes with scripture verses inside and they wear robes with extra long tassels and they love to sit at the head table at banquets and in the seats of honor in the synagogues. They love to receive respectful greetings as they walk in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi. So what he's saying is the, those religious leaders of those times, they loved being out front. They loved the attention of others. They loved wearing all the fancy clothes. They loved having the best seat in the house. They loved the attention that people gave. That's why they were in it to get the attention, to get the best of the best. They weren't in it for the people. And any leader in God's house must be about the people, must care about the people, must be sensitive to the needs of their people. That's the, that's the heart of Christ because Jesus died for people. He suffered for people. God wants people, humans to be saved. He's preparing a place in heaven in the Father's house for people who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So verse eight, he says, don't let anyone call you rabbi for you only have one teacher and all of you are equal as brothers and sisters. I'm going to say that again. All of you are equal as brothers and sisters. And don't address anyone here on earth as father for only God in heaven is your father. And don't let anyone call you teacher for you have only one teacher, the Messiah. Verse 11, here it comes. The greatest among you must be a servant, but those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves 
will be exalted. The greatest among you, says the Son of God, says the Lord Jesus Christ, must be a servant. So we can't be great in God's house without serving one another. Those who exalt themselves will be humble. They're going to be brought down. And all we got to do is watch. You don't worry about everybody else. You concentrate on being a blessing. Don't judge everybody else. Just love them. Pray for them. God help them to taste and see that the Lord is good. That they would humble themselves before the Lord. He says those who humble themselves will be exalted. I want God to exalt me. I want God to promote me. And he's telling us this is how you're going to get promoted in the kingdom. Humble yourself. Take care of others. Don't think you're better than anybody. Love them. Do your best to lift other people up. You love God, my brother and sister, by loving people. You see a need and you meet it. You find a hurt and you heal it. You find somebody down and you lift them up. Even if you're hurting yourself, take the time to help others. Finally, in Matthew 11, Verses 28 through 29. This is out of the Amplified. Jesus said, Come to me, all who are weary and heavily burdened. Here in brackets it says, By religious rituals that provide no peace. And I will give you rest, refreshing your souls with salvation. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, following me as my disciple. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest. Renewal, blessed quiet for your souls. So Jesus, our example, says, come to me with all your burdens, all your cares. Give me your burdens. I'll give you rest. Then he says, take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. Partner with me. Watch me. Observe me. Learn from me for I am humble and I am meek. And then you will find rest for your soul. So how about we start by just giving the Lord our burden and then purposing here from this day forward to walk with him, to watch him, to be like him. And I can tell you, you can start right now. Start today. Start with the people in your house. If you live with others, take care of them, serve them and do it from a joyful peaceful heart. Let Love must be sincere is what the Word of God teaches us. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you be the real deal, to let genuine love, mercy, and compassion come from you. And let's just make it a point right now going forward. We can't control everything that's going on in the world, but we can control the things we do. So let's purpose going forward, serving everybody with a pure heart and doing our best to bring glory and honor to God by the way we live. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. God bless you.